I wonder what the sort of vibe will be between Erling Haaland and Trent Alexander-Arnold on the pitch on, on Sunday at Anfield. Um, you've seen this story, um, Jason, with Haaland biting back, saying after Trent Alexander-Arnold said that, you know, the trophies that Liverpool have won have meant more to them. Well, Haaland has said, well, I've won a treble and he doesn't know what that feels like. I mean, is this, you know, a, a little bit of added spice? Is it just, you know, uh, just a little bit of nonsense? How do you, how do you see it? I think it's good old-fashioned knockabout. We don't always see this nowadays, but everyone's far too polite to each other, especially before a big game, because they don't want to tempt fate. We certainly won't get it from the managers. I don't think Guardiola and Klopp will, will go for each other tomorrow. They're far too uh, respectful and polite towards each other. But I think it's quite refreshing, actually, to see the players having a go in this manner. I mean, I do. I mean, you can, you can follow Trent Alexander's argument, but actually I do find it slightly offensive really that he he can tell other fans that this means more for his set of fans than it does for them and and good on Erling Haaland that's fair play he's, he's bitten back on that and he's defended his club and and what they've achieved um you know I, I do think you know sometimes that people to try and tell tell other people how they should feel and how they how they how they feel feel this more than they do um and I do find that kind of strange I mean Liverpool actually got a marketing slogan I think saying it means more um, I'm not quite sure how they can justify that, but obviously that's their, their opinion. But certainly, Haaland has, uh, has, has come out fighting and come out um, hitting back at Alexander Arnold, and, and, I, and I don't blame him for doing so. Is there any credence to what Trent is saying here, Jonathan? The idea that I suppose Manchester City, given their vast resources, uh, the amount of money they've spent on players, that their titles aren't as good as 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 hard won as worth as worthy as liverpool's are do you, do you do you see anything in that in that argument that trent is espousing there look every every football club in the world every player every fan of a football club thinks that their passion and their devotion and their club means more than it, than it does to other people that, that's just the nature of fans uh you know obviously liverpool have this have this kind of marketing slogan but you know Every club has this has this kind of exceptionalism to them. It, it's what makes it's what makes football such you know such an, an incredibly passionate and, and also divisive sport. It is that that sense that what what we feel as as fans can't possibly be replicated. Of course, it's, of course, it's not true. You know, you ask, ask City fans who were there when they when they won the league in 2012, or you know when Ilkay Gundogan scored the winner against Aston Villa to, to, to win the to, to win with three goals in the last 20 minutes, or, or when they you know when they won the treble in Istanbul. You know you. Obviously, it means something to those people, but I mean, Trent Alexander-Arnold is right that to Liverpool fans, to Liverpool, obviously, it, it, it means more to them. And, uh, you know, if, if you look at the full extent of his comments, he said, you know, obviously, City have won more than us. Obviously, if you look at the, you know, the bare numbers, they've had a more, a more successful era. But, you know, what, what their, their, their single league title and their, their single Champions League means to them, uh, you know, don't discount that. I, I think that that's perfectly legitimate. You know, is, is it... Is it empirically provable? Is it true? Is it you know? Does it have any kind of basis in reality? No, but that's kind of the that's the nature of fandom. You know, we all we all have this kind of exceptionalism to us. Uh, I just sort of wonder. Arsenal could be top by the time that Liverpool kick off against Manchester City if they beat Brentford at home on the Saturday night football. Um, if you're an Arsenal fan, or if you're Mikel Arteta, from you both, just briefly, what would you want the outcome of that game at Anfield to be? Would you want it to be a draw or not, Jason? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, it's it's an interesting one, as you say. I mean, he's going to sit back and, and watch that that game unfold, and hopefully he'll be hope, he'll be wanting to do that from the the, the top of the Premier League because it certainly fits Arsenal that um, everyone's talking about Liverpool and Manchester City virtually all the time now, as if this is the title decider uh, when when they may both be going to that game not on top of the table. So. Yes, I'm sure he'll probably look at it and I guess a draw is probably the best result for him. Um, but certainly, if they're top of the table, Arsenal will be, will be delighted by all the attention being elsewhere. Uh, what about you, Jonathan? Are Arsenal's greatest threat, if they are top of the table, still Manchester City? So would they want Liverpool to, to take points off them, as in beat them? Yeah, I mean, I think the nightmare scenario for Arsenal is a, is a City win, followed by a Liverpool win, followed by a draw, just because of, of the fact that you know, the, a draw means there are only two points taken from that game instead of three. Uh, and I think Arsenal would, would back themselves to, to to chase down Liverpool City just because just of the pedigree, just because they, they have done it so many times before. And obviously, you know, with, with the way it turned out against Arsenal last season, they're the team you don't want to have to chase down. And Arsenal won't want to do that if, if they can possibly avoid it.